Okay, ionic bonding and lattice energy. Okay, so before we talk about lattice energies, we need to understand the energetics of ionic bonding. And so taking sodium chloride as an example compound, in order to have an ionic bond between sodium and chloride, we need to remove an electron from sodium to form sodium plus and add an electron to chlorine to form chloride minus. So it takes 496 kilojoules per mole to re remove an electron from sodium. So this is the first ionization energy. And it's positive 496 kilojoules per mole, which means we have to put that amount of energy in. So that's to ionize sodium. Now, when we give the electron to chlorine to form chlo chloride, then we actually get 349 kilojoules back. And so that's why that energy is negative. And remember, this is electron affinity. This is the amount of energy released when an electron is given to a certain to an element. All right, but even if we think about the ionization energy and the electron affinity, these numbers still don't explain why when we react sodium metal and chlorine gas to form sodium chloride, that we release so much energy that it's so exothermic. It re releases a lot of energy. So there has to be some other little piece to the puzzle. And this third piece to the puzzle is actually called the lattice energy. And this is the energy given off when gaseous oppositely charged ions come together to form a compound. Now you can also, you also will see this defined as the energy absorbed when you take a compound and you know separate it into its gaseous ions. So the other way around. In that way, the lattice energy would be positive. If you look at it as these oppositely charged ions come together to form a compound, they give off energy, then the lattice energy is negative. So it depends on which way you look at it. Now, electrostatic attractions are really important in ionic bonding. And basically that's because an ionic bond is an electrostatic attraction between anions and cations. So remember anions are negatively charged, cations are positively charged. And the, this energy associated with these interactions is governed by Coulomb's law. Now we're not going to actually do calculations with this, but it is helpful to really look at the equations. So this energy, this is a form of potential energy, energy of position. And this is Coulomb's constant, so it's just a constant, nothing to worry about. But the interesting part of this equation is Q1 and Q2. So those are the charges on the two particles that we're talking about, in this case an anion and a cation. And the other piece is this distance between the two charges. And so we're going to use both of these things, either the magnitude of the charge or the distance between the charges to rationalize relative lattice energies. So we're going to compare lattice energies for different substances based on how big the, the particles are and how highly charged they are. So overall, lattice energies of ionic compounds are pretty darn big. The lattice energy for sodium chloride is 787.3 kilojoules per mole, which is only slightly less than that given off when you burn natural gas. So it's actually pretty amazing. Now, the bond between ions of opposite charge is strongest when the ions are small. So let's go back here again to Coulomb's law. So if the ions are small, then that means this number is small. And so overall, this is a larger number, but it's negative, so it's a more negative potential energy, which is more favorable. So again, remember, the bond between ions of opposite charge is strongest when they're small. Now, when we extrapolate this to lattice energies, then what we're going to do is compare compounds formed from small things, like fluoride anion and lithium cation. So those are the smallest on our list, and we get a lattice energy of 1,036 kilojoules per mole. Now, if we compare this to the lattice energy of cesium iodide, so those are the two largest ions on our list, then we're going to get 604 kilojoules per mole. So that's a lot less. Now, as the charge increases on the ions, then the ionic bond also becomes stronger. 
So here's another table comparing different compounds with different charges on the ions. So let's look in particular at sodium hydroxide. Okay. So sodium hydroxide has a lattice energy of 900. And look, this is a negative 1, positive 1. Now let's keep sodium and hold it constant. And let's go over here to this oxide. Okay. So now we have 2,481 because this ion is more highly charged. So that's our first example. Now let's really get extreme and let's go to aluminum. And so if we make aluminum hydroxide, then we have, have 5,627 kilojoules per mole, which is much higher than the sodium oxide. And then let's also go ahead and look at alumina. And that is Al2O3, okay? So that's 15,916 kilojoules per mole. So that is a really, really high lattice energy. Okay, so what do you need to know about lattice energy? Basically, conceptually, understand that the lattice energy increases with the charge on the ions, and it also increases with decreasing size of the ions. So again, looking at your table, so lithium fluoride, lithium chloride gives the different compounds. So you should go through and be able to compare different compounds to each other and decide basically, relatively speaking, how large would those lattice energies be for these different compounds. All right, let's just look last at this full plot of the energetics of ionic bonding. Now, you do not need to reproduce a plot like this. I'm just going to go through it because I want you to be able to see the whole cycle. It's called the Haber cycle. So here we're, here's our sodium chloride solid, okay? And now if we want to break it up into its elements, we're going to be right here, okay? So we have sodium solid and one half of a chlorine diatomic, all right? Now, in order to turn our sodium solid to a gas, we put in a certain amount of energy. So now we're here. And now we have to split this diatomic, so turn it into an atom of chlorine, and, and it's notice that it's neutral. And so we're going to put some more energy in. All right, so now we have sodium gas and a chlorine atom. All right, now let's ionize our sodium. Okay, so we have to put in a nice big chunk of energy there. We're going to get our sodium ion in the gaseous form, that electron, and then this chlorine. All right, now we're going to give the electron to chlorine, and now we have sodium and chloride ions. And then finally, let's go ahead and let these guys come together and form a compound. And so the amount of energy released is this lattice energy to form sodium chloride solid. Now I mentioned also that you could separate out the this compound into its ions and then you'd have to put energy in so here's the lattice energy in the positive sense. So you're going from a solid to the gaseous ions and so this is also the lattice energy. So it's the negative lattice energy when you are putting the ions together to form the compound and it's positive when it's going to form the ions separated from each other.